five, four, three, two, one, and we're live. Hello. Hi, Jenny the Hi, Eakers. Dave. So, I'm so glad you came by. Oh, so good to be here. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. And yeah. um, for those of you who don't know, Jenny Lee is an amazing French horn player. I've uh, been in Vegas for about 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, also is a, a graduate of USC with a master's in French horn performance. Is that what your master's that, is yeah, in? Yeah, that's what it's yeah. in. That's pretty <laughs> of all awesome. things. <laughs> To look at Jenny, you would say, nah, she's not a French horn player, but <laughs> <laughs> That's I, my don't, thing. I don't know what that means. What does that mean, right? But uh, yeah, so um, so you do that and you do, um, and you have your own group. I do, yes. Called Electra Brass. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Electra Brass. Electra Brass started back in the day with you. Yep. In the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> We were in the trenches for a while, weren't we, with that yeah. group? Yeah. Oh, man. We were busting our butts trying to get that thing going. We were. And then it, and, and you know, we had, we had all the, um, all the, the horns were all going through the, the Yamaha silent brass. Oh, my gosh. I forgot Remember about that. Remember those things? So, female brass players right. that can do what Bella Strings can do. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, Bella Strings is a, a group in town uh, run by Miss Nina Di Gregorio, mm -hmm. and I'm also a part of that. And mm -hmm. it's uh, basically a uh, a rock violin group. So we thought, what a great idea to make mm -hmm. a rock horn group right. and use distortion pedals and use all this crazy stuff. And so and uh, Nina helped out. And Nina was helping at yeah, the time. She was part yeah, part of the team. And Seth Udoff as well. Yeah, Seth yeah. Udoff approached me and I had thought about it and, and Seth said, why don't we do this together? And I was like, okay, let's go, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so you have to find female brass players that, that was a difficult part <laughs> that perform at a high level that have the look and stage presence that can right. move, can memorize yeah. choreography and memorize music, work the sound pedals and basically, it's like finding a unicorn, but you have to find three of them. <laughs> you have to find three needles in three large haystacks. Exactly. <laughs> and we found some of them, and then they ended up moving on with their lives, moving right. to different cities, you know, um, right. pursuing their dreams and goals as musicians. And yeah. so then we would find new people, try and make it work, and all in the process, working on the sound and the tech and the yeah. the marketing and the costumes and, and the tracks else. and the oh, oh yeah. goodness, and the promo and all of that stuff. Oh my you, gosh, yeah, video shoots and photo shoots. Yeah, and, you were working your butt off there for a while because you yeah. Um, well, for those who don't know, obviously, um, you're a full time teacher right. as well, elementary and, uh, music teacher with the district. Yeah, I remember getting off work and just going straight to UD Factory. To just work on stuff all night, yeah. you know? Yeah, exhausting. Yeah, yeah because I remember you'd come over at, right after work at like 2, 2.30 or something yeah. like that, and we'd just hammer it through and keep working. And, yeah. And, and it's amazing how, like, you know, you think a project's going to become a certain thing or be a certain way, and you have it in your head how you want the project to be, and then you start realizing, well, wait a minute. Maybe it doesn't need to be this, or maybe it should be that. And it's, you know, it's such an evolution, you know, it's such it a, is a, a journey, a, a process of, you know, and you really went through it <laughs> with electric <Electra> brass. <laughs> like I've seen projects that, oh, but you, you, you went through hell with that group. It's been a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot, but I loved working on it because, yeah. you know, you have a dream and you have a passion and you have a vision. Yeah. And you have people, awesome people like you helping you and, yeah. you know, a creative team. And it was just, you know, I loved I, the process. You know, I, I was, um, you know, um, Callie. Say hi, Callie. Hi, everybody. So this is Callie Tucker over here. Anyway, and Callie and I, Callie and I talked about this um, not long ago where it helps so much to have some, at least one other person that you can 
bounce your ideas off and work with because it's no fun working on your own it's fun working with other people and yeah. it, it may right callie i agree yeah you know cause, definitely because callie and i are kind of working on on some video projects and some things and and it's been for me it's been a blast having her because you know you, and, and like you said when you have the right person to work with it's 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 key yeah the synergy you know? yeah yeah definitely it's awesome but yeah, i remember it's better than one yeah. Yes. The thing goes. Absolutely. You know? And we all have to support each other, I feel like, you know, especially when it comes to the arts and music and creativeness. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, I, I personally, I come from, back, from a background of like every man for himself. But when you get to meet people out here and like share common interests and everybody wants to help each other, that changes this industry dramatically, you know. And I get that in Vegas. I love the yeah. community here. I feel like it it's is very really, supportive. Very supportive. I mean, I think yeah. for me back in Nashville, it's like, you know, cutthroat, you know, and, yeah. and you know, when, when we really could be empowering each other, lifting each other up, mm-hmm. taking our, taking each other to the top, you know, and that's yeah. how, that's, you know what I always talk about, like the business model in Vegas is different than anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And I think that is like the main element for I me at it least. Too. It was that way in LA, very cutthroat. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of yeah. crap talking and it's just bad yeah. energy. Yeah. But I love that about Vegas. We're very proud of the music community in Vegas. And, you know, I've said this on the podcast before that, that, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just phenomenal. Everybody helps everybody out. Oh yeah. Yeah. And in those beginning years, I had so much help Yeah, just out of the woodworks, people who could tell, I think they gravitated towards my passion. Yeah. You know, like Michael Sue, when we did that desert video, he was like, I just was exuding my passion. And he was like, Hey, I'll do it for free. Right. I just want to be a part of this. Let's do it. Let's go in the desert and let's shoot a video. And I was like, Hey, let's go. That's awesome. You know, things like that. Yeah. And, and you too, you helped yeah. me so much. Yeah. Nina, everyone at UD factory, Sean Raider yeah. worked his butt off Seth and yeah. Jason and, yeah. um, my buddy Andrew Smith from Blast. Just yeah. All kinds Andrew of too. Yeah. That's right. I, I had forgotten about Andrew. And he's on yeah. tour. He moved to oh, New York. Really? Okay. Yeah. And he's on tour with the Broadway show. I can't remember which one. Oh, he's doing great. Very cool, and he's doing well. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. We definitely uh, went through a few <laughs> incarnations. So, so, you know, instead of having all the crazy sounds and all that kind, mm-hmm. kind of stuff, so what has Electro Brass become? Where are we now? It's become a trio, not okay. a quartet, with French horn, trumpet, and tenor sax. I found an awesome tenor sax girl who lives in Seattle, so we, we fly her down for corporate events and stuff like that, but she's just everything. I mean, she's got the stage presence, and she sings like rock star and plays the tenor sax like, oh. Oh, that's awesome. Like butter. Oh, I like butter, She's huh? so good, and she's just an awesome person. So she come, she flies out and does events with us. Yeah. And then um, Extreme Live Productions approached okay. me about getting Electro Brass at the link. So they have their whole concept with Caesars Entertainment is getting 24-7 live entertainment at the link. Wow. And 24-7? All, Even in the not, middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> really? That's their concept. They're not there yet. But also having all the entertainment being integrated. So in one room you have the stage show and you walk through the casino and you have the DJ booth and they're playing the same song and, and the track is being played throughout the casino by different kind of groups oh really and then you go to another section of the casino you hear the same song but you see um a duo of uh of girls doing tricks on hoverboards or you know you have circus sex mix in there too so in other words in other words the the song that's playing whatever particular song they're playing mm-hmm. is actually being played at this exact same time throughout the casino exactly yeah and the performers are hired to do their choreography to this particular song right. wow that's pretty crazy yeah. i've never I, who would have thought that they and then yeah, it's all integrated idea. into um into social media and live streaming so they've got cameras and they're streaming it to their their properties in china and really? dubai and that's pretty really heavy cool. duty now what about so when you perform does that mean that you don't really have a choice of the songs that you do do you have to do the song that's being performed Throughout the casino? Actually, or? we're kind of an opening act, and we're our own entity. Oh, I see. Hired okay. separately. 
So we we kind of we start at five and we end at nine, and so we get our own choice. We need to do like recent mm-hmm. fun pop stuff, which is it's just fun. Okay, to do. yeah, that's fun. Yeah, so we have a lot of freedom, which yeah. is nice. Do you have uh, Do you have any like production elements going on in your show? Do you have video? We have a little bit like? of video yeah. and and the lighting, but basically, um, our thing with that show is we do multi instrumental. So I play French horn, also play guitar and then i sing some and then cena is doing um auxiliary percussion and she's our main vocalist okay and, and that's then, uh that's cena foley cena foley okay and yes. she's uh cena's been in town for a long time she's yes. fantastic oh she's amazing and i love working with her yeah amazing boys professional you know 110 percent. she's just awesome to work with and then Richard Paw plays trumpet, and originally we hired him to do that, but he also plays keys really, really well. So okay. he does both. Okay. And then we have Sam Limos on saxophone. He also does percussion, and then they also sing. So okay. we all kind of try and do... Even so it's though a four-piece. Well, we have Sam on Fridays, and we have Richard on Saturdays, so we kind of oh. rotate the group. Okay. So it's interchangeable. Yep. And yeah, and that way you have three people on stage, but we're kind of doing all... All the different instruments. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And so you have, obviously, backing tracks that you play to. And yes. That's kind of the way, you know, uh, it's kind of the way that things are going yeah. these days, you know? I mean, nobody wants to deal with a full band and drums yeah. and guitars. and. It's definitely more marketable. You know? I mean, I'm a horn player. I love all the horns, you know, like what Perico's doing with pop strings. I mean, it's, that's ideal. And he made it happen. That was yeah. a long road for him too. But with the tracks, it's more flexible. Like I can put down my guitar, go play some drums. Yeah. I can grab the mic and, and do it some still background sounds vocals. Full and yeah. Yeah. Go out into the Absolutely. crowd. They want a lot of interactions. So yep. go out into the crowd and have them dancing with them and yeah. and it makes it flexible that way. Yeah. It makes it interactive and fun, I think. And, and Perico, uh, Dave Perico uh, is um, he has a group in town called um, Pop Strings, mm-hmm. and um, they're phenomenal. Mostly, mostly um, acoustic violins and cello, right? right? Mm-hmm. And, but he's, with the rhythm section, yeah. With so he does it with the full band yeah. and all. <laughs> no tracks. He's that's, like no tracks. That's a lot. That's a lot of work, but, which is um, very impressive. But but he started out when he started out. He started out with Pop Evo, right? Right. Which was with. The whole, like a you know, 20, 30 piece. Wow. <laughs> full horn section. He would put some strings in there and then the full rhythm section. Yeah. Like, and he's one of the, the only ones in town that, that is doing like a full on, he is, you know, yeah. orchestration type thing like that. And he paved his own way. Yeah. He's a real talented guy. He's done Super well for himself. Brilliant. Yeah. It's awesome. So go see Dave Perico at, is it Cleopatra's Barge? Yes. Yeah. At, at Caesar's. At Caesar's. Friday's 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 Saturdays. Saturdays. Yeah. I think it's I, 9 to midnight. Have you ever seen it's, him, Callie? No, but I just yeah. played there. I've, I've never played there before. And I yeah. I was like, that place is awesome. Oh, it's awesome. so fun. Oh, oh my love. gosh. His band is amazing. Yeah, his band's pretty pretty badass. Yeah. For sure. I'm so, so happy for him. There, shout out to Dave Perico. Yeah. <laughs> DP. Yeah. So, um, so you're still teaching full time or what's going on? I with am. You? I'm on break for summer. And I'm actually leaving the district and going to a private school where I'm doing okay. 75% of full time. So it's kind of going that's great. towards part time. Oh, that's great. Though. But, but you at least get to do it still. Yes. And I know, I know that you have an absolute passion and love for teaching. I do. I yeah. do. I love kids. I love music. And... Um, I'm happy that I'm leaving the district because the class sizes keep getting bigger and bigger and I got a great opportunity at Adelson. Oh, you're going to be at Adelson? I'm going to be at Adelson. Well, my son went to Adelson oh, really? for, for like Aww. four years. It's yeah. an amazing school. Yeah, I know all about Adelson. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And they're all about the arts and they want me involved in a lot of different things. And, really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I know a lot of the people at Adelson, so that's that's awesome. That's yeah. um for those of you who don't know, Adelson is um it's a, a Jewish mm-hmm. school in uh Summerlin and uh yeah, uh owned by Sheldon Adelson, mm-hmm. who's the richest man in the world. Or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's I'm a, excited. He's the one who built the Venetian. 
Is he? Yeah. I didn't Adel- know that. Sheldon Adelson well, wow. owns the Venetian. Yeah. He, he, the school is definitely impressive. They have like a robotics department. And, they have a robotics department? How and their crazy theater is, is super impressive. And wow. It's a beautiful school. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That sounds like fun. And I went to Shabbat and I'm learning about the Jewish culture. And yeah. I was like, Shabbat is music. They just sing. They just have They start fun. their Friday morning with singing. I'm like, I love this. Yeah. I'm going to be playing guitar and... Oh, yeah. Just singing along with everybody. So you're going to be in charge of the entire music department kind of a just thing? Just the lower school. Just the lower school, mm-hmm. um, but but all aspects of it, including, you know, strings, horns, all of that, right? Well, or, the lower school is more like rhythm and singing based. Yeah. And then you get into the upper school, that's Dave Philippus, who's a trombone player in town. He's with Do- Donnie and Marie for okay. years. Okay. And he's in charge of the upper school, which is where they do band and instruments. Yep. Yeah. But I'll be doing the lower school and then the um, the Broadway musical production that they do every year is a big thing. Oh, yeah. So I'll be yeah, helping awesome. with that. So you were in, um, sh- was it Showstoppers? Yeah. You've been in some sh- shows in, here in Vegas mm-hmm. and been a part of that. And um, So t- how, how did you like doing the whole show thing? Was it something that you really enjoyed? It. or Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. actually the reason why I moved to Vegas. I was doing freelance work and Broadway shows in Pittsburgh. Okay. And I loved it. And I said, I want to do more of this. And I had friends in Vegas and there was Lion King and Phantom of the Opera playing in 2009. And I was like, I'm going to try and move to Vegas or I'm going to move there and I'm going to try and get in the shows because, you know, that's what I want to do. That's what I love to do. Yeah. So I just went for it. Yeah. And made it in, began subbing. Okay, so mm-hmm. what what show was first? Actually, I started subbing in both. Lion King and Phantom of the Opera. Okay. So I had to do like an audition show. And then... So you met Lindsay Springer and yeah, all those people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Beth Lano, yeah, Bel Bernatus, yeah. were the horn players. Um, yeah, and then I decided I wanted to go back to school to get my teaching degree. Okay. So, so you, more school. So you had already gotten your master's from USC, mm-hmm. and then you got your teaching degree on after that. Exactly, yeah. Okay, UNLV. so how long of a process is that to get your It took me about degree? two years. I had some credits transfer, Yeah. and yeah, with student teaching and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And that's how you got into teaching. Right, So yeah. you're doing the shows and teaching, right? Yes. Yeah. Doing the shows, going to school, then teaching. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then had okay. a break, and then Showstoppers came. That was two years. Everybody always... Girls work so hard. It <laughs> blows me away. <laughs> but it's great. I feel like when you when you have the opportunity to do things you love, you just go for it. Yeah. You know, then I, I pursued yoga teaching. I was a yoga instructor and playing in the shows and teaching full-time. Then I started Electra Brass. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> my mom kept telling me. She's like, Jenny, Stop. You need a break, Jenny. Yeah, I was yeah. like, eh. Wow. I'll sleep. And now you're eight doing, hours a night. And now we were talking earlier before the show. You are fostering a child right now. I am. And that I'm is, a foster mom now. That too. is like the, the sweetest, most awesome thing. Aww. I can't tell you how much I think that's so cool. Aww. And so tell me about her. I have a little seven-year-old girl. Okay. That I'm basically helping out in this time of crisis for her family. Yeah. You know, when a child gets taken away from her family, they go to child haven. And from there, they need to find placement because it gets crowded. Okay. You know, the sad reality is... So child haven is basically um, a place where they just take care of her. Right. But her and uh, numerous other children at the same time, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's a facility they go to and they have beds and they have people taking care of them and feed them and, you know... But they can't stay there. They need to go to a home because, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many kids that get sent there. It's so sad. So my role is I, I can take actually just one kid right now. Yeah. And so I met this little girl. She's seven and asked her if she wanted to come home with me. And she said yes. And it's wow. been about six weeks. And, you know, we... I try and help her, but it's about her entire family too. Like her mom is getting help. You know, we all, everyone that's involved, we want to help the children because she has a brother also that went to foster care. We want to help the mom. We want to help the whole family become more healthy. 
Wow. Which I feel really good about, you okay. know, I, I'm not adopting her. It's right. totally, you know, adoption is permanent, but I'll have her for maybe a week or a year. You never know. So wow. you just kind of go with the flow, you know, try and make a good impression and show her love and kindness. Maybe in a way she hasn't experienced, Yeah, you know, and, and just try and help. Yeah. So. That's amazing. So, so you, uh, how long do you, I mean, do you kind of have an idea of how long you think you're going to have this girl? Or? I don't know because there's kinship. So family friends or actually family members, the caseworker will investigate, okay, where can she go so she can be closer to her family? Because they want that. They want to keep, you know, some unification yeah. or unity within the family. Yeah. And so the, the caseworker will tell me, well, there's a possibility she might be leaving. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just like, okay what can I do? You know, I'm not in charge and I'm actually not a legal guardian. Okay. She is in my custody. So I have to go with the flow at all times and just think so, whatever's best for her, you know? Okay. So the other thing that I, uh, know about you happen to know about you is that <laughs> I find this funny, but awesome at the same time is that you are a weightlifter. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, to look at you, you would say, nah, she's not a French horn player. And to look at you, you would say, she's not a weightlifter. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you are. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> so It's small how did, peanuts. How, so how did the whole weightlifting thing start happening? Well, actually, my brother and my sister-in-law, his wife, are um, CrossFit coaches. <laughs> And they got married a couple years ago in Cabo, and all their friends are out there in their amazing bikini bodies right? from doing CrossFit. And I'm like, man, they look good. I need to try this out. Yeah. So I did, and I just got hooked. It feels, it feels so good. It's very empowering. and Super cool. Yeah. We got a video so, of it, too. It. Oh, we do, do we? Oh, yes. <laughs> Get ready, okay, everybody. So, so, folks, here is Jenny Lee um, weightlifting. Check this out. Mm-hmm. 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 A little snatch work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't you call it snatch? That's a snatch, yeah. Oh. No, With the wide grip, and, and then, then you, you pop it up. Pop it overhead, yeah. Snatch. I like snatch. I mean, <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, snacks. Yeah, no, never mind. Like the power yeah, snatch. I like snacks. <laughs> snacks? <laughs> One more, get it. Mm-hmm. Oh my, look at that. That's crazy. Whoa. And you said, what is that? So you said seventy-five pounds. Seventy-five pounds. Yeah. Oh, that's and then let's much. just slam that thing down. And yeah, mm, that's yeah, right, baby. folks. I'm done. Genuinely, <laughs> <laughs> weightlifting. That's awesome. I get some hey. odd reactions. You're gonna inspire a lot of women. Aww. Well, if anyone's ever thought about trying CrossFit, I recommend it. It's changed my life. So CrossFit meaning, it, what does CrossFit entail all aspects of like working out kind of a thing? It I does, mean, I'm not yeah. Sure they exactly. call them boxes. The gyms are set up um, with all kinds of different things. It's called functional fitness. They're all about variety. So we, we do the Olympic weightlifting, but it's not all the time. Okay. There's everything. There's so running and cardio. So what's your regimen? Uh, when you when you go do a CrossFit session, so to speak. Uh, yeah, when yeah. you go in, there's the wad, the workout of the day that's prescribed to everyone. So the snatches and wads and <laughs> yeah, you might okay. cleans and deadlifts, and you walk in, you don't know what you're gonna get. You might be climbing ropes, you might be oh, doing so it's box different jumps, every time. Huh? Different every okay. time, yeah. Okay. So they 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 try and mix it up, and you're working out with a group, and everyone's joking around and. And supporting each other. And so I love that. That's like my social time. And most of my friends now go to my CrossFit gym. Wow. We hang, yeah, we see each other almost every day. And we work out together. Or How long sweating do you work out for? It's an hour. Oh, just one hour? Just one hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. I you feel gotta... like you're ever going to die in that hour? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. And for some reason, I've you're like... i before too, and I'm like, oh my God. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What, what time do you go usually? I usually go like four or five. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, for one hour, one and hour, yeah. it's probably close to your house, huh? Yep. It's in my neighborhood. And oh, that's it's awesome. A very, it's like very social. You know, there's a lot of gatherings and just the way the workout is set up. 
we're all interacting with each other and what would you say to somebody that like is you know scared to kind of start that because it seems really intimidating yeah like you I walk in and it's like this really big thing and all these fit people and you know having to keep up you, you kind of get a little like you know down on yourself and kind of scared like it's, yeah it's, that's it's really true. hard what advice would you give I would say that also the concept is that you're getting a personal training experience in a group setting. So the coaches are trained and they're all about giving you an individual experience. And our coaches are amazing. And I know all the coaches are supposed to do that. So you walk in and wherever you are, they'll say, okay, we're doing snatches today, but you've never done a snatch. So let's get you on some dumbbells. Let's give you a similar movement. That's good for your body. That's not going to kill you. And they'll modify everything for you. Oh, wow. That's yeah. great. That's I mean, great. there's, there's 60 year old, seven year old women that go in there. Is or, that right? Yeah. I wow. mean, and you, when you learn to trust your coach, then you know that everyone's there just doing it their level and everything can be modified. So how do you, I know you, um, um, people don't know this about you either. Yet another talent. Um, that you're a yoga instructor as well. I was, yeah. I kind of went from the yoga world to the CrossFit so, world. So how do you how do you feel about um, do you do you miss the yoga thing or would you kind of prefer the CrossFit? How, how? I do miss yoga a lot, but it's like okay, there's only so many hours in a day, <laughs> and CrossFit <laughs> is 150 a month, which sounds like a lot, but it is that personal. Right. Coaching, training. You know, if you paid for personal training, you're going to spend more than that. Do you go every day? I try and go every day. Oh, wow. Sometimes. I didn't, but I plan on going later. (laughs) Oh, my God. Wow. You know, some I try and go at least three times a week. Yeah. Two is not enough for me personally. But, you know, if, if I had my way, let's say I didn't work, I would be a part of a hot yoga studio. I would have a membership and I would do CrossFit. Yeah. But right now, I just I'm just focusing. Yeah, you on can the only do it yeah. so much. I didn't have to work. I learned underwater basket weaving. I, I know, right? The things I would do with my time. <laughs> exactly. If I didn't work, like, oh my gosh, I would change the world. Well, because that's the best. You're weightlifting. You need the yoga. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, I was thinking the same thing. I yeah. It's got to be like, you know. Yeah. So so um, how uh, how often does Electro Brass work? Just We're two getting, days a week. Yeah, we're doing the two days a week at the link, okay. which is fun and new and different because it's kind of morphed into a multi-instrumental male mixed female. What days are you with there? Singer. We're there Friday and Saturday from five to nine. Okay. Inside the link casino. So go see Electra Brass. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, five to nine. It's super fun. You'll be glad you did. Mm-hmm. Where else are you playing that people can go see? And then the other work we get is corporate work. Awesome. Yep. Basically with the the female trio or duo. We did yep. a duo one. Who's uh, mostly who's mostly booking you for the corporate stuff? We have a place Innovative Entertainment out of San Francisco. Yes. Do you know them? Peter Berliner. I know all of them. They are wonderful. Carrie and yeah. Yeah, oh In Entertainment's great. Yeah. We've oh. worked for In, In Entertainment for years. We In yeah, fact, we just it. did a gig 2 weeks ago for Oh, in nice. entertainment, yeah, yeah, in they're Francisco. great. They're super nice. Luke, that's who I usually work with. Luke oh, Jacobs. Luke Jacobs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Fudale, we've done some with them. They're in town. Okay. Yeah. Good. So Good. I want to do more corporate work, especially yeah. in town. But, yeah. You know, we get them every now and then, and it's nice. Yeah. That's if people great. wanted to book you, where would they go? They would go to electrobrass.com Awesome. Or email me. Okay. Or find us on Instagram, Electrobrass, Facebook, Electrobrass. Yep. 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 How's your Instagram doing? It's good. You're good. Yeah. You got a big following? Uh, well, I think we have like 700. Now that's okay. You're yeah. getting there. Huh? It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. I, it, it always amazes me, like, uh, who gets followings on Instagram? I feel like that, the dumbest people get the most followings. That, that's it's what sad. I was the just going to say. The most talented people have better... <laughs> Things to do with their time, yeah. And then try to get followers. It's an true. anomaly. It's totally it's wacky, it, isn't it? Though I, just, right? I don't really worry about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I'm kind of laid back about it because yeah. I refuse to like buy the followers. Oh, me too. You yeah. know, yeah. a lot of people do that, and I'm just like, no, it's got to be organic and I, absolutely, I yeah. And and you know, it's 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 crazy how um, you know people get like you know 
two million followers just because they're somebody's boyfriend or something. I yeah. don't know. You know what I mean? Or someone's girlfriend. Or I know. Famous kind of situations. So. I try and do the marketing thing and I try and keep up with it. Yeah. But well, how do you how, push how, it too how, much. How do you, how do you like to market as far as like with Electro Brass and all that? What, what, what do you, how do you go about that? I whole send thing? out mailers like every mail, couple of ma- weeks. MailChimp? Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing. MailChimp. Yeah. And then just post photos. Yeah. Get professional professional videographers and photographers to come out and shoot us and then post that and yeah. Yeah, that's that's the best way I think anyway. You know, yeah. To get yeah, to get you know. To I mean I'd love to have a marketing person do it. That's another thing that I try and do on my own. And it's interesting. Marketing is always a hard a hard thing, you know. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's always a you know as a as an artist, it mm-hmm. um, you know you want to be an artist and you want to do you know and so marketing is like the last thing you want to spend your exactly. time on. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's so important at the same time. It is. So it's just a really catch, really a catch twenty two for us yeah. musician artists. Yeah, it's type something people, I've researched know? and looked into, and it's tricky. Yeah, it's very tricky. I'd be it curious can. to see where, like you know, because as self-made women and, mm-hmm. and men, like, you know, we're, we're trying to do all, I would mm-hmm. be so curious to actually go to a well-known marketing company, take us on as clients and actually see what, what, what it could, what could come from it. Like exactly like I need Probably a guarantee. A lot. I need a guarantee. That it's its own art form. Yeah. And it's you know? oh, it expensive. Show, it so is. Yeah. yeah expensive and intricate. Mm-hmm. I think that it is yeah. reading the reports and knowing what's going on. It's like, okay, wow. It's and like coding. It's like codes. Yeah. You yeah. Go with code. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And all the, and all the, um, you know, reading all the data and figuring out, you know, who to, who to market yourself to. And you know, the, it, it gets involved, but there's people out there that are just, they're so good at it. It's what yeah. they do, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. I could definitely use some of that. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty laid back. I'm yeah. kind of a go with the flow person, Yeah, you know, and trying to insert myself into like yeah. this businesswoman role, which is cool. Yeah. It's empowering. Do you like, being yeah. the yeah, I mean, because you're the owner of of Electro Brass. Yeah, I mean, so, I literally yeah. do everything, but yeah. you know, I'm also kind of like okay, I just go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just my personality. I don't like to force things too much. Yeah, you know, I like things to have their own path and journey, and then my life will insert itself. I'm like, okay, well, this needs to take a back burner. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because this is calling to me now, and that's okay. Yeah. So so where are we going from here? Any idea? Are you just going with the flow? I am because now I'm doing this fostering thing yeah. and Electrobrass is getting more corporate work, which I love. Great. Great. And eventually I'd like to just be on the side, you know, in the background of Electrobrass and not performing and just Oh really? Getting girls out or getting groups out. Oh yeah. And I can be at home fostering, yeah. teaching a little bit. Yeah. You know, managing the group. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. So you you don't think you'd miss performing that much? Actually, no. <laughs> you know, my ego's out of it. I can actually it. understand that really? to some extent. Yeah, I mean, it I gets do to love be a it. grind a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, and I've I've done it. You know, yeah. I really have done it a lot since I left college. I yeah. was traveling and performing, and then came here, yeah. and you know, and now it's like. Um, I would still like to. I still love to do it, obviously. Well, yeah, but yeah. not all the. I don't need to. Yeah, my ego's kind of gotten out of it completely. Yep, I understand that. Yeah, and it's just like, eh. I, I would th- love to give someone else the opportunity. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like a younger, a young gun, just like how I was, just yep. burning for the gigs, you know, and yeah. wanted the opportunity. I would love to give that opportunity to someone else. And you know, when when we all originally got into music we got into music because we loved love 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 music yes you don't become a musician unless you love love it's just love, the only thing love in your music. head it's just all you that's can't in your head think of anything else yeah and then the best thing and the best treat that you get from starting to become you know good at your craft is you get to perform for people and get paid. And get paid. You're like, oh my gosh, At the yeah. first, that's the most awesome thing in the world. And then yes. when you've done it for years and years and years, you're kind of like, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do I, I have to go do a gig tonight. I basically have to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it becomes a little bit of a, of a work thing, you know? Yeah, it's true. Wonder Nothing whatever. against people who do that. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, for me personally, I'm kind of like, I will get more thrill out of being the person that's providing the opportunity. Right. Right. For others at this point. And there's so many fun other aspects of the entertainment industry that you can do. Like we were talking earlier about, you know, you've started to learn how to, how to do, you know, your own tracks, mm -hmm. your own video editing. And I mean, I love the arranging. It, yeah, I do too. It's fun to be in the behind the scenes production end of it, you know? Yeah. It, it really is. Yeah. If That's... I could have a group that I'm not in, <coughs> but I'm organizing the video shoots and editing them and getting them out on gigs and costuming yeah. them and yeah you know. yeah all of the, all of that part of it's really fun and then i don't have to worry about doing it myself yeah i agree with it's you a lot to be the performer and yeah definitely and the leader mm -hmm. well i'm so glad you came by oh thank you for having me yeah it was nice i mean you did have fun right yeah. <laughs> we had a couple Potty. we had a couple technical difficulties but we got them figured out. That's you know? okay. Right? Cuz we got the man. <laughs> we got the king here, Mr. King. So anyway, Jenny Lee Kearns, Electra Brass, and um, we are signing off. So Thank you guys for listening if you did the whole thing. Yeah. It's very impressive. Uh-huh. Dave's the man. <laughs> Follow Executive Blonde. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, and goodbye. Yes. Bye.